on the topic education at the brink of collapse, finding sustainable fin funding to protect education. everyone. So my name is Hugh McLean. I'm a South African, Badly. actually. Tanzania, Guinea and Ivory Coast are simmering in the aftermath of their elections. Senegal, I have to say, um, set what I believe was a world leading example, following science and consulting with teachers unions during the early months of the pandemic. All these events show us that democracy is something we can never take for granted and that we have to fight to preserve. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, my name is Gong Chol Zhang. As you present. this year, 2020, and this month, particularly December, marks the 60th anniversary of the Convention Against Discrimination in Education, and we unfortunately witnessed that the COVID-19 has widened the pre-existing pre-crisis uh, 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 disparities and inequalities in education. So what we would suggest, uh, uh, invite governments and their uh, developed partners to protect education in their financing and prioritize some enabling areas for achieving SDG4 and the other SDG, uh, SDGs, such as uh, uh, providing direct and targeted support to the most vulnerable po uh, populations in order to mitigate massive numbers of children and youth at risk of not returning to uh, school. And the international uh, aid must also pr prioritize countries most in need of support. And government will need to uh, develop and implement education and training policies that equip youth with the relevant skills towards an inclusive and green recovery and structural transformation of the economy. My name is Maud A.K. Seka. A very important point, which I think is very necessary. Um, I think COVID or, or no COVID, we should also prepare a business continuity plan for the education sector. Because if you don't have a business continuity sector, a plan, sorry, what it means is if you have a similar incident like COVID, it means you are going back to lockdown again. So if you have a business continuity plan, uh, you would have assessed the relative uh, strengths and weaknesses of IT systems in different institutions, how you intend to upgrade them so that um, when you want to deliver online lectures, it's possible. Invested. There has to be a new process of debt cancellation. The, uh, I think UNCTAD estimate about $1 trillion dollars, one trillion dollars disappears from developing countries between 2020 and 2021 in debt servicing. The money is there. The question is, how do you spend it? Do you spend it on providing services for your citizens or paying back debt, which in many cases is, uh, was, was uh, taken on in an untransparent and unaccountable way? So we need a massive new movement for debt cancellation. The pandemic has created a need and opportunity to reflection on what is and should be prioritised. In this reflection, the case for lifelong rights to education must be articulated. The question of how this will be paid for will inevitably come next. However, as the previous speaker emphasised, these are political choices. Resources will always exist to some degree, whether in or outside countries. The deployment of these resources be towards education and arguments which coalesce around a straightforward and bold proposition. Gradualism in a crisis context, or in the appeal of pragmatism, and hence being some seen as lower risk, may indeed also have a pretend, present greater risk. Partial arguments for education not sufficient, when other voices, talking about limited resources, calls on government, other needs to fund other activities will be loud and vociferous. Being heard is essential. Um, my name is Kira Bo, as it was just mentioned. I'm the education policy lead for Oxfam, and I'm based in Copenhagen, Denmark, which is um, why we can impact the, the decisions that are being made right now in government and multilateral institutions around the world. These are decisions about budget, about investments, about what is important, about what to prioritize. And obviously, sitting in this room, we all agree that there's nothing that could be more important than education. 
we know that education is not only the silver bullet for economic prosperity for the individual, education can make societies more equal, more democratic, more resilient to challenges such as COVID-19 in the future, but also other challenges. It also makes societies healthier and more prosperous. But that requires that governments and those in power see that value. And that's where you all and we all have a role to play. We have to convince them. We have to make them see how vital it is that education budgets are not cut due to economic austerity measures or due to debt servicing, as several have mentioned. Over 80% of the teacher union re respondents from 34 African countries consider the e-learning measures taken by governments to be ineffective, mainly because of challenges related to digital infrastructure and connectivity. Teachers lack the necessary training and support for them to be able to deliver effective online teaching and learning. Furthermore, Data costs are very high and unaffordable to many educators, students, and families. That is why Education International is calling on the African Union and African governments to regulate data costs. Unless data costs are regulated and digital infrastructure is made universal and accessible to all, distance education and e-learning will remain a pipe dream for the vast majority of our children and youth.